We could change the criminal justice system in America for half of Americans by electing just about 100 new prosecutors. We can stop needlessly caging people right now if prosecutors will just open the locks. I'm Emily Bazelon. I wrote a book called Charged, the new movement to transform American prosecution and end mass incarceration. So if you go back to Richard Nixon, you see politicians start to really capitalize on people's fear of crime. I pledge to you that the new attorney general will open a new front against the filth peddlers and the narcotics peddlers who are corrupting the lives of the children of this country. And you see that translate into promises to raise sentences, to keep people in prison, to create mandatory minimum sentences. We've created this huge punishment machine, and it's still functioning and grinding along every day. But there's increasing awareness and interest in taking apart that machine. The American public is receptive right now to taking steps to reduce and end mass incarceration. In 2010, I was working on a story about reforming California's three strikes law. And I was talking to the Republican district attorney of Los Angeles at the time. And he told me the story that when he was starting out as a prosecutor, the assistant DA sitting right next to him, a file landed on this other guy's desk. And it was a man named Gregory Taylor who was homeless. Gregory Taylor had unscrewed the screen door to a church food pantry in order to get in because he was hungry. This guy was gonna charge this as a third strike. Gregory Taylor was gonna go to prison for the rest of his life. And he told me this story, he said that he would never have done that. And I thought, that's crazy that someone's whole life, whether they get locked up, that depends on who the individual prosecutor is. We think in America that if you face criminal charges, a jury is gonna decide your fate, but that's just not true anymore. The reality is that only one to 2% of criminal cases end up before a jury. Everybody else plea bargains, and that means that prosecutors in America have tremendous power, way more power than the system was designed for, and there are lots of bad things about that, but at this moment in time, it also presents an opportunity, because there's a growing social movement and really bipartisan consensus that mass incarceration has spun out of control. And we as local voters have the power to elect our local district attorney. The reform-minded prosecutors who've already taken office, when they come through with their promises, they're showing us the path to this new criminal justice system. What happened in Philadelphia were that some community groups, especially in communities of color, they were really ready for change. So Larry Krasner comes in as this reform candidate and these community groups really get behind him. And they figure out this essential insight about about a local election for DA, not that many people vote, not that many people care. They were going door to door for Larry Krasner and it had a profound effect. He was elected DA and he came into the district attorney's office promising to end mass incarceration. There's a similar story in Brooklyn. The district attorney of Brooklyn, Eric Gonzalez, is helping people expunge old crimes by holding workshops with defense attorneys and actually local law schools. People can just come in and find out how to do this as opposed to being left to figure it out on their own. Another example of this is in Kansas City, Kansas. Mark Dupree is the first African-American elected as DA, and among his reforms have been instituting a rule where prosecutors will turn over evidence very early on in a case, instead of trying for what we call trial by ambush, the idea that you're gonna nail someone with some secret evidence you have at trial. He is giving evidence over earlier so that people know what the state's got on them and can make a knowing decision about how to handle their case. There's also this restorative justice program in Washington, D.C. Carl Racine is the chief prosecutor in Washington, D.C. And they have this interesting program there where young people who've harmed someone come in and talk with that person. The idea is that instead of punishing people, sometimes what's most meaningful is to offer some kind of healing and reconciliation, not just for the good of the person who did the wrong, but also for the good of the person who was harmed and for the community. 80% of the young people who went through this program avoided rearrest. We the people, local voters, elect prosecutors, and that means that their power is our power. We have the power to shape and reshape the choices they make.
We can put people into these tremendously powerful offices with our local votes. We can change the whole shape of the criminal justice system with people who we elect locally without changing a single law. Even if you've never had any experience of the criminal justice system, you should care about it because it's a reflection of the morality of our society. And I think these new DAs are trying to turn that around. They're trying to show people that safety and fairness go together. They're not in tension with each other. They're two halves of the same whole. Emily Bazelon's book, Charge, is an incredible deep dive into the state of prosecution in America and the role that prosecutors can play in reforming the criminal justice system. So please check that out and don't forget to hit subscribe for more great videos from Freethink.